Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself. Cynical Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com on the internet. Send me bitcoins. Stop being greedy, you little buggers. Send me more bitcoins and send me name coins. Name coins, so I can die, buy, bleh, bleh, so I can talk. So I can buy a dot bit domain. <clears throat> In theory, I'm going to bang out a quick one here. Boy, you've never heard that before from me, have you? The last quick anarchy moment I did was, you know, 35 minutes or some shit. The world of computer software. Two things recently happened. In a discussion with people about computer software, there were a group of us together at different experience and knowledge levels about computer software, and we were discussing RSS feeders, RSS readers, rather and getting your RSS feeds and conglomerated in one place. And one of the people mentioned a RSS service she uses, which is on the internet. I forget what it was called, and I wouldn't plug them anyway. And I said that what I use for RSS reading is a open source software called Quite RSS. You can find that on the internet. Q-U-I-T-E-R-S-S. -S, Quite RSS. It's available for Windows and Linux. I'm not sure if there's a Mac version or not. I don't have a Mac, so I don't know offhand. But it's open source software, and you can export your feeds so that you can sync them between multiple computers and yada, yada, yada. So the person, one of the people in the room who is way behind the curve on all this went to the web-based RSS feeder to check it out. And of course, when she went there and attempted to utilize it, it says, oh, you must give us access to your email and you must give us access to your personal data. And she's like, well, what does all of this mean? And I, of course, said, well, this means that, remember, this thing is provided you to you for free, except that just like Facebook and Google and everything else, the people providing the software, they're not a charity, they're a business. They have to make money. And the way they make money is you log into this service with Facebook or whatever, and it gets your personal information from Facebook, and then they sell that. Whether they're selling your information directly or whether they're using it to funnel advertising at you, you know, or whatever it is, but they're selling your personal information because remember, as the saying goes, if you are not paying for it, you're not the customer, you're the product. And of course, in all fairness, now I'll throw this out, that same question, statement, comment could be aimed at open source software. Because with open source software, you are typically not paying for it. So then what are the people who doing, what are the people creating that software getting out of it? And this is a perfectly valid, legitimate question to ask and explore. So anyhow, that was my cynical ass opinion, which those of you who listen to this know that's just the kind of person I am. The person who recommended this espoused the opinion that, well, but that's just the way it is today. All of our information is on the internet and our information is going to become more and more available and you just have to accept that to use these tools on the internet, you're going to have to give them access to your personal information. And this represents exactly the sort of attitude that's gotten us where we are, right? I mean, the government is going to put people in jail for drugs. We just have to accept that that's the way it is, because that's the way it is. Obama is murdering people in foreign countries with flying robots. Well, we just have to accept that's the way it is, because that's the way it is. You can't get a job without an identification number issued to you by the government. And that's just the way it is, and we have to accept that that's the way it is. As I have said before, the beatings will continue as long as you allow the beatings to continue. And this is why I don't log into shit with Facebook. I don't log into shit with Twitter. I don't like, you know, I don't like things like discuss as a comment system. Anything that wants me to fucking log in and give them my personal data. If I can't create a login account for any kind of service that's not tied to Facebook, Twitter, whatever, I just don't fucking use it. And I limit the amount of shit that I put on the internet. I very deliberately put false information about myself on the internet to water down truthful information. 
And at some point, you just have to decide, are you, as a person, do you really want more and more of your information? Especially those of you, this is what I can just never, ever fucking get over. Those of you who are these left-wing statists who hate capitalism, who hate corporations, and yet just have no problem giving all of your information to the corporations, who have no problem being on the receiving end of all the advertising and all the marketing. I really, I just, I can't fucking understand this. I cannot understand it. The other thing that just happened that motivated me to go ahead and talk about this is, so I'm on Facebook, because I gotta be on Facebook every now and then to do shit with stuff I do. And in one of the groups that I'm in, this message popped up from somebody, and she installed AOL Instant Messenger to communicate with a client, and she got it from CNET, and now her browser has been hijacked by Bing, and she she actually deleted the message, so maybe that means she solved the problem, or maybe she was embarrassed to have to ask, because I think she's a Mac user. Mac users, I have found, are all not always, because I know some Mac users who are actually very technically savvy. But Mac users, in addition to every bad thing I've ever said about Mac users before, Mac users, I find, tend to be, there's a small number of Mac users who are really, really, really technology intelligent. And then there's 90% of Mac users who can barely pick their own nose without assistance. So she installed AOL Instant Messenger instead of using Pigeon, which is an open source instant messaging client, which works with all IM protocols out there, at least as far as I know. Facebook, AI, uh, Facebook, AIM, Yahoo Messenger, IRQ, yada, yada, yada. So if you need an instant messenger, get Pigeon. It's everything in one place. It's open source. No spamware, no spyware. It doesn't hijack your web browser. But she said that, you know, Bing took over her web browser and she mentioned, she was, oh wait, do I still have the... Because I'm trying to remember what the fuck else she said. Nice, I already deleted it. Let me try looking in my trash over here. La la. Yes, and it says, I'm getting weird driver support pop-ups. Awesome. So you install some crap from AIM. And CNET, I think, is one of these places that they piggyback stuff in. Because, for example, a FileZilla, which is an FTP program, if you get FileZilla from certain online distributors like CNET, when you go to install it, they add this shit in where it also installs other shit. So that's the other thing about open source. Always go to the website of the open source program and get your stuff directly from them. Don't get it through people like CNET because CNET takes open source software or even free software or even unfree software, whatever, and they piggyback these other installers onto it to shove more shit on your computer. I can't, you know, you're trying to install shit. like, we will also install Google Chrome for your convenience. Like, no, motherfucker. We will change your homepage and your browser to Bing for your convenience. No. Okay, and as you're clicking through all this shit to install software, be sure you read what the fuck it's saying. But anyhow, well, yeah, you installed AIM from CNET and it fucked up your computer because you didn't use open source software, you got some shit from CNET, you didn't do a little research before you did it, and now your computer's fucked up and you need to know how to fix it, okay? The beatings will continue as long as you allow the beatings to continue. Stop using all of this fucking software that puts spyware on your fucking computer. Get a goddamn Linux box, or if you're gonna run Windows or Mac, you know, run it intelligently. Utilize open source software. Jeez, people. Jeez Louise. So that's the moral of today's story, my friends. Open source software. Now, is open source software guaranteed to be free of malicious 
scripts or spyware or stealing your information. No, of course it isn't. Of course it isn't. But with open source software, since anybody can look at the code, if people put that shit in there, at some point somebody is likely to find it and call them out on it. And at least you'll know about it. Whereas with closed source software like AIM or Skype or anything else like this, nobody will ever most likely have any idea what's in this shit unless somebody does some really serious hacking to get into the source code and view it. So open source software isn't guaranteed by any stretch to be free of shit like changing your homepage to bing.com so that you can use the same search engine that your grandmother uses. But it's less likely to have that sort of shit. And it's open source software is less likely to require you to log in with Facebook so that they can sell your personal information to corporations. Open source software, my friends. It's... It's not the wave of the future. It really isn't because the sheep all the 99% are going to continue to use closed source closed source software that is foisted upon them by the corporations because the 99% who hate the corporations are going to always do what the corporations tell them to do. But if you want to be in the elite 1%, if you want to be capable of thinking for yourself and if you want to maintain some level of privacy on the internet Open source software is not a 100% guaranteed perfect solution, but it's the best solution that's available to us.